Our next two speakers are artist uh, Peter de Kuppere, who combines smells and visuals, and Frede Bakker, VEB professor of education. Together, they will explain their completion that beauty is experiencing wonder. Beauty is about placing something in its context. To use the words of Peter, the beauty of an artistic work lies in the execution of its concept, even if it bears an ugliness within. We would like to welcome Frede Bakker and Peter de Kuper. I'm an olfactory artist. That's an artist who makes art in combination with smells. I've been doing this for more than 20 years. And besides being an artist, I'm also a teacher and a coordinator of the Open Lab at the PXL Metz School of Arts in Hasselt. Last year, I finished, finished my PhD, and I did a research about the use of scent to give context to the work of art or use it as a concept in a work. Uh, this PhD was a collaboration between, in collaboration with uh, the Pixel Met School of Arts, the University of Hasselt, and the VUB. And one of my promoters, my three promoters were uh, uh, Dr. Professor da Dr. David Heuke, Professor Dr. Willem Elias, and the third one is uh, Professor Dr. Frey de Bakker, my colleague here. But our collaboration started earlier. Uh, Peter and I have been working for more than five years together on arts, science, and the role that education can fulfill. And every time we get somewhere, we are presented as beauty and the beast. And that statement made us think about beauty and ugliness. And the relationship between ugliness and beauty turns out to be complex. Umberto Eco describes beauty as things that are pleasing to contemplate, independently of the desire we may feel for them. This means that there is no preconceived notion of beauty. And anyone who talks about beauty quickly refers to beauty ideal. And that combination with ideal demonstrates that there is no such thing as universal beauty. The perception of beauty depends on place and time. In the same period, even in the same country and region, different aesthetic ideals can coexist. And similar to the notion of certainty of the scientists, beauty is never absolute or immutable. Beyond the experience of our senses, there are no strict rules, nor is there a model to determine ideal beauty. Our conception of beauty is taught through cultural transmission. So beauty is often determined not by aesthetic, but by political or social criteria. Beauty, and therefore also ugliness, cannot be separated from our knowledge what our culture forces us to like. It is subject to all kinds of power relations. And following the idea of art for art's sake from the second half of the 19th century onwards, art and beauty fused together. And it's a typical Western invention that beauty is an essential value for art that must be achieved at all costs. And although our uh, artists are capable of representing the ugliness of the world in a beautiful way, such as pain, uh, violence, destruction, abuse of power, that art does not necessarily have to be beautiful. The intention of an artist is to affect our senses. An artist stimulates our sensory system to question cultural hab habits about what is considered beautiful or ugly. And from modernity onwards, our senses, traditionally the eye or the ear, are forced to toe the line of the rationale. That is why today we want to address one of your other senses that is less subject to the rationale, your smell. And what applies to the eye also applies to the nose. The experience of beauty can only be found in the nose of the one who smells it. And perhaps even more than with the eye, the nose brings us into doubt about beauty and ugliness. 
Perhaps the smell is a reliable tool to explore the fragile boundary between ugliness and beauty. And together with you, we will investigate if there is ugliness hiding in every form of beauty. And if ugliness, therefore, is a form of beauty. All factory artist, Dr. Peter de Kuppere, will introduce the hidden beauty of smell through three examples. So, we, in these COVID times, we are used to disinfect our hands. This was also the case by entering this event. At the entrance, there were two hand sanitizers, one with a, a lovely scent and another one with another fragrance. <laughs> so, some of you will be very happy, some might not. So I suggest you all smell your hands and discover how they smell. So if you're feeling happy because it's smelling to a lovely scent composition of lavender, tea tree, and juniper, I have to say that you're not so lucky. The other ones that will, no that will notice that their hands stink, Actually, they are the lucky ones. Because the disgusting, bad-smelling odor will prevent from unconsciously touching your nose and mouth with your hands. This is because smell has also a kind, can also have a kind of uh, a warning function by its own. So they are actually the lucky ones. For those who don't smell anything, I suggest that they go to see a doctor. <laughs> so you all got this uh, little green pocket that's in your bag. Please open it and take out these smelling strips. The first one you have to take is a jasmine. Jasmine, everyone knows it's flower, but actually, it's the most expensive floral fragrance in the world. So, when, when you go and smell the flower, uh, sorry, the, the fragrance from the flower, take your time and try to imagine how it smells. Most of the time we don't often look very close to fragrances, but they tell quite a lot of things and give us a lot of information. Is there something specific that you recognize in it? If you would describe it, would it be sensual, this scent? Does it smell sweet? Or it's definitely also a warm smell, I would say. It's nice, com Contradiction with the evening that's colder. And if you smell a little bit more, you will maybe discover that it's also a little bit intoxicating, the odor. Or that it's exotic and uh, very intense. But the most interesting part of it lays deeper. You have to smell closer, very low into the fragrance. Go deep, take a very deep sniff to it and enjoy it, because afterwards you might maybe not enjoy it anymore. There is a kind of animalic element in it, and actually that's the second fragrance. That's the indole. So take the second scent trip, oops, and yeah, I would say enjoy the smell, but whoops, sometimes it goes difficult. Take a good sniff, <laughs> very deep. <laughs> you can even do like this. So I hear some reaction in the, I hear that everyone is very enthusiastic, nice. So this indole actually, it's something we come across almost on daily life. And this is just a low concentration. 
uh, so you can imagine. But it's actually a main component, very important component of French jasmine, and actually for most white flowers. So next time when someone offers you a bouquet of white flowers, think twice. There might be kind of yeah, other message underneath. Because indole is actually the main component of your shit. So this is a low concentration, but in the French jasmine it can go to 2 to 2.4%, 2.4%. So, uh, uh, so next time you're sitting on your toilet and I'm showing your own smell, find the beauty in it, related, and think about it in the right context and use, it can be very beautiful. A third example, in your little green pocket, you find this little card, and there's a little perfume bottle inside, an aroma bottle. You will see it looks empty, but actually it's totally, totally full of freedom. So open the bottle, a little vial, and smell it. And try to imagine what it smells for you. It's something you will also recognize. Some might think, I hear it often that someone thinks, ah, it's from banana, or concomer, or kiwi, or Granny Smith apple. But actually, this is real, the real fresh cut, a uh, real scent of fresh cut cross from Limburg. <laughs> but there are little components in it. Uh, the, there's a kind of one fragrance uh, mo molecule in it that comes also in the other elements I mentioned before. Uh, so when you smell this, eh, it rep represents for me the smell of freedom. I use it as a symbol of freedom. So in 2016, these files were sold to support refugees' organizations. Uh, so one drop of this uh, gross scent was kind of used as a symbol of, of freedom. The reason why is you must imagine arriving after a long and a very exciting and dangerous trip over sea. You, you arrive at, at land and uh, then you will expect or you will be able to experience the spaciousness of a green, green beautiful meadow. It symbolizes this whiteness, this freedom. So you can smell it, but actually there's one little thing on it that you cannot own it. When you try to get the scent out of it, it sticks to the walls and doesn't come out. So, and that's also where this concept goes about. And that's the beauty of it also, that is questioning what's freedom also. And uh, because a lot of people don't grant it to others or do not uh, sh uh, cherish it enough by themselves. So Peter took you on a smell trip, and to conclude, we added one more symbolic experience um, of beauty in the bag, called Love Bullets. Um, so, yeah, enjoy, discover, and remember, what you see is not always what it seems. And with every breath you take, you smell. So keep in mind, when breathing, because maybe one day it might be the most expo expensive product in the world. Let's hope it will not become like that. Thank you. Thank you.